Hello everyone and welcome to this latest video discussion as part of the RICS Tech Partner Programme. My name is Andrew Knight and I've been working with RICS for over 12 years now and I sit within the knowledge and practice part of the organisation looking at the effect of data and technology right across the built and natural environment and with over 100, 110,000 qualified members working worldwide right across the property life cycle through land, planning and development, construction, finance, valuation, brokerage, building and asset management and building surveying, obviously a huge canvas upon which data and technology is having a profoundly positive effect on the sector and indeed our members work in all the major asset types land itself residential commercial alternative assets and infrastructure so once again a huge positive impact that data and technologies have uh, is having and I'm really pleased today to have uh, Angelos from uh, sector join us so welcome to the discussion uh, Angelos hey Andrew uh, very nice to be here thanks for inviting us a pleasure. Uh, and it's always nice before we get into the kind of bits and bites and, and the kind of technology side of things to get a bit of a kind of human elephant. So it'd be great to hear a bit about your backstory and the, the origin story of Sector, if we may. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Angelos. I'm the CEO uh, here at Sector. Um, Sector started about five years ago uh, from uh, a full construction, project management, construction management background. Um, while we were working on site, our passion really was to digitize construction sites. Um, at the time, five years ago, um, there wasn't too much digitization going on in uh, the European and Middle East region. Um, and uh, we started Sector to uh, help construction and real estate companies digitize. Um, it's, a, it's as simple as that. We, uh, we started off by, by partnering with um, some major um, uh, construction technology companies from the US. Um, and now we've developed our uh, technology implementation platform, providing a full SaaS service. So I mean, you, you mentioned that kind of winding back to a few years ago about the kind of level of adoption. What, what would be your perspective now on the current state of technology adoption and particularly kind of integration of technology across construction? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I would say that it, it varies by region. I would say the 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 countries that are the, the country that's um, the furthest ahead from everyone um, in terms of adopting construction technology is the U.S. Um, America, um, uh, Europe uh, is about five years behind that, and then I would say Middle East uh, is maybe a few years behind Europe, uh, but slowly catching up. Of course, every region operates in a different way, so it's not a you know neither a good or a bad thing, but. Uh, I, 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 I really do believe that you know the, the more we use technology, especially in an industry that is so low margin, um, the better it is for for everyone. Low margin and, and really wasteful. Indeed. Now I, I'm minded that that one of the issues that that always perhaps concerns me is it is perhaps too strong a word, but I was at a conference. Uh, in fact, it was the first prop tech conference in in Greece a couple of days ago, and we had some presentations both from some some local participants and people from Cree Tech and uh, another tech partner, the Prop Tech Connection. And, and what struck me, uh, which is something I've I've been very aware of, is just the the, the thousands and thousands of, of of operations that are out there offering not just contact but 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 applications across the whole kind of data and technology marketplace for property. And is this there's this huge challenge now about customers being presented with so many choices. And I suppose almost it's this need for integration seems to be really, really key at the moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there are there are 6,000, the last time we saw there, there which was uh, maybe a month ago, 6,000 construction technology companies, around 10,000 prop tech technologies. Now, Andrew, it's really important to remember that none of these existed before 2014. Yeah. So most of the most of this happened in less than 10 years. Um, you know, they 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 raised a lot of money in fundraising, um, tens of billions, um, and 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 customers are experiencing a bit of tech fatigue right now. But mm. the, I think that the, the really big difference that we're noticing is that we're moving away from um, having all-in-one solutions. Kind of like the Oracle of the days where, um, you know, there would be one platform to do everything for you. And we're moving into best of breed interoperable solutions. So the need for integrations really has never been higher. Um, and I think that the result of this um, is that we have more usage, more usability on site because construction is so complex. Tools that work really well in the office don't work well in the field, and things that work well in the field don't are too simple for the office. So marrying the two 
um, is where the is where the magic's happening in construction tech right now for sure. I suppose yes, because if, if we compare it with perhaps more uh, other sectors where there've been you know ERP ERP systems like Oracle and SAP where you can have a kind of a an overall solution, as you say, that doesn't really work in the property sector because there are so many different nuances and as you say, difference between on-site and off-site and, and so many different kinds of businesses, perhaps in relation to other sectors, that this integration seems to be the way forward, doesn't it? Well, you know, ERPs have been around for 30, 40 years already, and they, you know, it's not that they haven't had their their shot at construction. They, you know, they, they've been <laughs> at it before construction tech. Um, they, they they had a 30 year um, window where they could have they could have made a change, but construction is still the least digitized industry on earth. So uh, I think it's safe to say that those tools did not work, did not deliver value to construction teams um, for for a multitude of reasons, uh, but. I think the the, the industry is uh, has realized it, and perhaps the tools themselves. You know, they're, they're, we, we really are seeing um, these platforms starting to talk about openness, APIs, open data, um, and, and I think it's good. It's good for them, and it's good for the industry as well. So I mean, that that that's obviously a very positive message about this kind of openness and integration. What what remains still as as the main challenges for construction teams when they're trying to uh, adopt these new technologies? Yeah, that's uh, that. You know, there's a there's a um, there's a a lot of research around that subject. Um, around you know w what's the main challenge? But you know, based on experience, I think it's as simple as just construction teams not having the time, um, not having dedicated enough dedicated resources to um, to to digitizing uh, their their construction sites. Um, and it's really not not more complicated than that. You know, have, if if you've ever worked on a construction site, you know how busy it gets. Um, you know that you don't have the time um, to develop new skills. You know, uh, unless you're you know some sort of a you know a superhuman that that you know gets the project management job done and then has the energy to learn a new skill and then has the energy to fight with everyone to implement it. So it, it, it's really not more complicated than. Um, than the, the the fact that construction companies, construction teams need dedicated resources um, uh, in order to to implement these solutions in the right way. I mean, do do you think there are still structural challenges given the sort of fragmentation of the sector, the different tiers, the perhaps the as you say the margin pressures that perhaps don't allow construction to have the R and D budgets that other sectors have? Do you think there are some, as I say, some systemic issues that still perhaps you know? slow the construction industry's adoption of technology absolutely you know we, we were just having a discussion um internally in the company about a about a project that we had a hard time getting into um and, and at some point someone raised the the question you know they said but this is a a 300 million euro project right it's a 300 million euro project but it's a jv so each contractor is already at half 150 million and if we look at the margin, single digit, um, single digit margins, and it's a three year project, how much is left for the contractor? Yeah. Five million at the end of the at the end of the three years. And you're going and telling that that person, that project manager, that I want to take away from that five million to implement technology. Yeah, there is there is a structural problem in, in construction. Um you know, and um it, it is the way that construction companies operate, um, we see a big difference between owner um, operators and contractors. Um, mm. on owner operators always operate on the, on, the, on the operational level when it comes to technologies, on the HQ level. Um, with contractors, it's always project by project. And, and, and that causes a lot of fatigue, both for the technology companies, but also for the, for the project managers who have to hear the same pitches again and again and again. Um, but I, I, I I think we are at the point now, you know, close, closing up to 10 years of construction tech where both contractors, um, owner operators, uh, and technology companies have realized these challenges and they're working towards resolving them. And that's from both sides. That's from contractors starting to operate with technology on an op operational level. That's from technology companies for making it easier uh, for a technology to be applied from one project to the next and to the next one. 
Now, we, we, we talked earlier about just the, the sheer number of kind of prop tech and contech firms that are out there and the solutions. And depending on the numbers you believe, you know, overall, there's might, there may be 18,000 prop tech firms out there. And from your perspective, when you're working with clients, when that you have that such a diverse pool of, of both early stage, you know, mature, you know, mid stage firms. How do you actually go around assessing the selection and implementation when you have this almost overwhelming set of possible solutions for lots of different projects? Yeah, um, it, it, and it's not easy, right? Because the the, the needs are varying, uh, but you always have to look at what's the what's the simplest solution that I can implement that can deliver the most value today. Um, and I think it's not a, it, that, that's a question that we're not asking ourselves enough in construction. Uh, because construction is complex by nature, our thinking process is complex by nature. Um, and when we look at technology, you know, we, we start to break it down into processes and procedures and we try to find the solution that's going to solve everything for us. And then we en end up with a million dollar bill um, or a million euro or a million pound bill for a technology. Um, that's hard to get through and then it's hard to implement and you know we have to train everyone and nobody has the time. So um, look for solutions that deliver high value or high impact solutions. They don't call you know, low to medium cost solutions mm. that are fast to deploy. And, and an example of this is reality capture solutions. So live feed cameras on construction sites, 360 reality capture tools, or in general point solutions. These types of tools our fast to deploy, our training tops, very high value. You're using a tool to capture your whole site. Um, there's high usability. You're going to be entering in, entering inside that app, inside that tool, ten times a day, using it in your progress meetings. That's where you get value. That's where you get ROI from from these solutions. Then once you're comfortable with that, then you can start thinking about the PM solution. So don't don't worry about the most expensive tool from the beginning. <laughs> and I know that, you know, you've been involved in some really kind of, you know, mega projects, you know, on that kind of infrastructure side, whether it's JFK in New York or Neom in, in Saudi and, uh, and projects in Greece and, and Hamburg. And, and you've touched on that kind of key question about ROI, because we did a survey of all our tech partners towards the end of last year. And it seemed to be a big challenge for the kind of prop tech sector to really demonstrate that ROI, that, that technology is not just, uh, you know, an end in itself, but it is about solving business problems. And you obviously mentioned these low, low impact things around, you know, uh, vision capture, as you say. Are there some other things around ROI that you've learned with these major projects, whereas you say you still have relatively no margins available? Absolutely. So um, you, you're speaking about mega projects here, and I, I, I think that the, the, the biggest a differentiator in these projects is that there's a lot at stake and that the owners are very, very involved because they know how much is at stake, right? If we look at Neom and our involvement at Neom is an Oxagon, which is a hundred billion dollar project. Um, the owner is very involved. They want to know what's going on on their site. They, 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 they want to have a feel of the, of the cost of the time at all times. Um, and the, the, uh, where we what we noticed about these projects is that there is a push from the top to implement and adopt technologies because they see the value um, that these solutions bring um, and a lot of the times we see from from upper management you know as soon as they purchase the solution as soon as they made the decision they say oh that's great you know i can sit back while you guys you know you do the you do the implementation now um but my my my, my advice is you know don't, don't don't approve any sort of technology that you're not willing or able or have the time to support throughout its its uh, at least its implementation phase. That that top level management um, um, support is needed. Now, when it comes to ROI, it's all about the implementation, right? So if you're if you're purchasing a solution but not implementing it in the right way, then how can you possibly realize the returns or all of the returns that, that that solution can bring you? And the ROI in in construction tech is in the thousand x if you if you implement it in the right way. Um, so I would say top management support is super crucial um, and also involve the the users during your decision making process. It's the people who are going to be inputting the data, um, and without them, you have nothing. Now, I, I suppose what one point I'd like to probe on is that that not every project, unfortunately, has that super engaged sponsor driving that kind of change from a top-down perspective. So, 
you know, for those other projects with, you know, construction teams that are busy on site, you know, their focus is on the project, you know, they don't necessarily have innovation teams or, or research and development. How is the rest of the sector going to digitize when not every project has that, that, that happy circumstance of an engaged owner, project sponsor, driving it top down and, and having that real engagement all the way through? Yeah. You know, Andrew, the... Uh... I, I feel there's there's an in inevitability to change, right? So I, I think that the best way um, to to we're talking about disruption here. Construction has been construction has been building the same way uh, for for the past 50, 100 years. Um, so the the best way to embrace disruption is to accept it um, because it's it, it's happening. Uh, admit that it's happening. Um, it's inevitable. Um, I, I, and I say this because it's still the same teams, right? And you said it yourself, you know, they're, they're busy. Um, they might not have that, you know, top level support, um, but it's still going to be the same teams who need to drive technology. Um, now, the, the good news there is that we know it. We know it um, as, as implementers of solutions. Um, and, and that's why Sector has uh, developed a, a, a technology implementation platform uh, to support teams to manage these implementations with less resources. And there's a lot of good progress happening in that space in general um, from all sorts of vendors in all sides. Um, I think that the industry has matured to the point where we've all realized we need to help these people. We need to help these people digitize, make their lives easy, um, uh, deliver um, low cost, high impact solutions and deliver solutions that can start to give value from day one. So do, do you almost see, because I, I suppose it's a phrase that, that shows my age, but in our, I, uh, over the decades, the, that concept of that system integrator, that, that consultant who can actually build that, that digital stack for, for clients seems to be perhaps emerging in this sector now that we have this level now of, 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 of people who can support firms with this journey. But it is this almost kind of old fashioned approach of say, let's find best of breed, we'll help you with the integration, we'll be that layer of support rather than expecting you to put these bits together yourself. Is that how you see things really working now? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. I um, we, we have a philosophy here that that consulting is changing. It's not going to be the same um, 10, 20 years from now. Um, we might even see some players move out of the market. Um, you know, not exist anymore. Certainly not in the way that they exist today. You know, in that slow, you know, charging by the hour, charging by the head, um, a, a, a process. You know, there's there's AI uh, uh, here to help us, um, uh, you know, take ChatGPT, uh, for instance. There's uh, AI happening in all in all sorts of areas when it comes to implementing solutions. So um, I, I I think the 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 success of the consultant of the future is to really uh, embrace technology themselves uh, and be tech companies instead of consulting companies. Um, you know, let's not forget, Andrew, that, you know, consultants like ERP has existed for 30 years, right? Yeah. If they would have been, you know, if they would have been successful, they would have been successful by now. We we have to change that model. Um, and and, and, and we, we are in an industry um, that likes to build things with their own hands. And that's why we're seeing a lot of contractors build their own solutions. You know, we're, we're like, there's, there's so many great off the shelf solutions out there. Why don't you just take one of those yeah. and, and implement it? No, you know, we like to build it ourselves. It's our industry. It's the industry yes. we're in. So we can either fight that and, and sit and sit back and complain, or we can change our model um, and, and support them and, and give them the tools that they need to implement solutions. It, it, it's really not, you know, having a good product makes a difference, but what really makes the difference is having good implementation. You know, you can have relatively great ROI with mediocre products if you implement them in the right way. Because a digital way is almost always better than a than a manual way, almost always. I suppose, yeah, and so much of the time it comes back to a change management program as much as the technology, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's a, a culture plays such a big difference here, but you have to show value. You have to show value to every stakeholder in this in this process. You have to show value um, to top management. You have to show them that this is this is. Not a technology is not a cost on the bottom line, but it is it is helping you make a profit. It is helping you grow as a company. You need to prove that. Um, otherwise, they're not going to pay attention to you. I mean, it's not worth their time. 
Um, you need to show value to the project manager who's dedicating time and, and resources out of out of his budget um, to to implement these solutions. And you need to show value um, to the to the to the teams that are inputting the data, the the teams out in the field. You need to show them that you know these solutions are saving them time, potentially money, potentially helping them in their careers, um, helping them be better, go home and see their families, work in safer environments. If you don't, if you're not doing any of that. Um, then, then, then technology is not useful or valuable to them. Exactly, and I guess at the sharp end on the site itself, it has to be super easy to use because it, it you know, it, it's it's there as another tool, not something that's going to get in the way of the working day, is it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, ease of use um, is, is top of mind, um, especially in such a complex environment. Um, now, the the good thing is that you know, and, and I think it's not random that construction tech is is now starting to. Uh, now starting to really take off. I think the first wave of why that happened, you know, 2014 was uh, about seven years after the iPhone was introduced. And that's really when smartphones um, were, were everywhere on construction sites. You know, you'd, you'd go to Saudi Arabia and, you know, I, 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 I grew up there, uh, Andrew, and I, I've seen, you know, thousands of migrant workers come in those construction sites with zero skills on day one. You know, they've never stepped a foot on a construction site. Um, and, and, uh, and you know, around 2013, 14, you know, they'd still come with with zero skills, but they had a they had a smartphone. Yeah. So you know, the first wave of of construction technology happened there, where the technology moved to the site and no longer needed the big heavy laptop that was um, that was sensitive to dust and and uh, and and heat um, and cold. I um, mean, then the second wave is happening now, um, which is the wave of automation. There's more and more automation happening. Um, there's more and more of that. You know. If this, then that. You know, click one thing, and then it, it it'll it'll trigger a series of events. Um, that's helping construction so much. So I guess a final question for you to, to wrap up. I mean, and you know, I was taught many years ago to try and walk in the the shoes of a customer. So if I was a construction director in a kind of mid market developer, and I wanted to really transform all the processes and workflows in my business to that sort of digital, better way of working, but on the other hand, I don't have time. You know, I've got important project construction priorities. Where would I start? Yeah, um, I would say go for low cost, high impact to start with. You know, if you're not digitized at all, and and what do I mean by not digitized at all? You don't have a project management system. You don't have a Procore, an Autodesk Construction Cloud, or yeah. or a Fieldwire. You don't have any of this, um, which is a foundational level of technology implementation in 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 our opinion. Um, then start with something that's low cost, high impact. That could mean a time lapse camera on your construction site. That could mean a 360 solution um, on your construction site. These tools um, are very high impact. They're very visual, um, so they're very viral on construction sites. Everyone gets to interact with them. Training is minimal. You know, um, time lapse cameras are plug and play. There's no training. Um, 360 tools, 20 minutes of training, um, and and they show a lot of value. You know, and once you, you start to see the value and your people start to see the value, um, then that'll trigger um, the next the next phase of events. But, you know, what I'll say for sure is it doesn't happen from one day to the next. Um, it's going to take time. And that's OK. Yeah. That's OK. As long as it's value driven, um, that's OK. I, I guess it's back to that 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 old phrase that the longest journey starts with a single step. You You just take steps that show results at every stage and, and eventually you will get there. But it's about steps that show value at each stage that justify themselves. Yeah, it, it is exactly about that. And the, the great news um, is that there are tools right now, there are solutions that give you value when you take those those mini steps, those baby steps. It, it didn't used to be the case, right? You know, you a baby step in the days of the ERPs was, you know, to get the whole accounting team to use the system. That's not a baby step, that's a leap. You know, so, so, you know, if today, if you can get a small team of five people um, to use the technology um, and you can give them value, that's a baby step. Um, it happens fast, can happen in a month, um, and, 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 and you can take it on to the next team or, or grow it out. Indeed. Well, what wise advice. Well, it's been fascinating to, to, to chat today, and I look forward to catching up again soon. But for today, Angelos, goodbye and thanks ever so much. Thanks so much, uh, Andrew. I, uh, uh, I, I love what you're doing, and it's uh, really great to be um, uh, to be partnering with uh, RICS in, in various uh, various initiatives uh, around the world this year uh, to promote uh, the use of construction technologies.
Indeed, great to have you on board. Thanks so much, Andrew.